You know, this is one of my favorite things to talk about, the 10 investment commandments. Now it's important to understand these are my commandments, right? Not necessarily yours. So take them for what you want and toss aside the ones that you don't agree with. But I think we all have to have guideposts, right? Investing is emotional. There's no way around it. It's, we don't wanna watch our money go away or we think it is and then we watch the news and it's all bad news all the time and we're worried about it getting worse. It's natural, we're human beings. So we all need to have those guideposts, the 10 investment commandments. Now, we're gonna break this into a couple pieces so that it's not too long. Number one, what you know isn't worth knowing. Now that's a tough one, because after all, we all think we're plugged in, we're wired in, we know what's going on in the world, and I know stuff. I'm an expert on whatever it is you do for a living, for example. But are we? Don't we sometimes think that when we're digging in deeper and deeper and deeper into something, and we really are excluding other thought, that we in fact become experts at our own opinion, what we already believe, and now we just simply have more data to prove that I'm right, but it's worse than that in investing, much worse. Because what happens is markets begin to price things in way before they happen. So what you know not only isn't worth knowing, the market already knows it and has moved. So now we think we're knowing stuff, we're acting on things and the market is not responding the way we thought it would be. Think about any major news announcement, maybe a local stock, Micron, announces great earnings and the stock goes down. Why? Because everybody already knew it. They knew chip prices were high and so on and so forth. And the price goes down, contrary to what you knew or were told that, wow, the earnings were great. So this is a tricky one too, because we kind of take it personal as if I don't really know stuff. But if, the sooner we can admit this, and to me, this is number one and it's key. We have to have great humility in this and understanding that what we know isn't worth knowing is really, in my mind, the cornerstone to wisdom in investing. Number two, don't overtrade. Now, this is a hard one because people always like to play around with their investments. They like, to, they, they like the action, if you will, like we're at some kind of a crap scheme or something. And so it's hard for people, but we don't wanna overtrade. And I want you to look at this chart and it coming up here, and, and, and you will see how bad it is when you start moving money around. In fact, if you miss just a few days in a year, you can give up all of your returns, or certainly a substantial amount, just a few days. And this is, goes over a vast period of time. This is no small period, a 20 year period of time. If you just simply miss 10 days, you lose half your return, 10. In 20 years, that's next to nothing. People think that they're being smart when they read the news and look at it, which just gets us right back to that number one, right? What you know isn't worth knowing. Don't overreact, don't overtrade. It's too easy to do, I get it. But even if you only missed 30 days in the last 20 years, wow, 80% of your returns are gone. Put it in the bank if you think you're gonna trade. That's just terrible, terrible, terrible. All right, number three. Don't succumb to your emotions. This is hard. And as you'll see in this chart coming up here, there are so many headlines that are just gonna throw you off and emotions have no part in investing. I think we can all agree in that, right? And yet they are the overriding thing that people do. We talk about herd instinct and how all the markets run together, but there's always a headline. If, if, if I wanna know what you're thinking as quotes, the investment public, all I have to do is pick up the newspaper and there's 10 things right there on the front page to tell us what we should be worried about. It's the end of the world. And just think about the last few years that we've gone through this, right? We had uh, 2008, 2009, and then we had all of the European worries. And then we were gonna print too much money and then we were gonna have hyperinflation. And then as soon as QE one, two, three, and four went away, the whole world was gonna cave in. And we couldn't possibly have Obama or Trump be in the office. So if you're on the left or on the right, again, you can't succumb to your emotions. We need to be in this and we need to be in it long term. Number four, let's not trick ourselves. 
to thinking that information is wisdom. Now, I'm going to give you a quick example of this, okay? There's really four different levels that I like to call wisdom, right? We have data, raw data, and we are, as a society, inundated. It's like little data points in a fire hose. You can't take it in, but we get it all the time, right? Whether it's from your smartphone, it's from the TV, it's from the radios, it's all that stuff. And all it is is data. Because if you don't have any context to put it in, it's just data. It's like saying, the sun is 93 million miles away. Okay, that is a data point relative to what? If we don't have some sense of the galaxy or, or at least our universe, right? Then what is what in the world is does that have any context with? It has none. It's just a number. And yet what people do is they can watch TV and they can hear somebody say something like, you know, I heard the yen, euro, hedge thing is in trouble. Well, that might actually be a true statement. But what I just said, I would venture that 99% of the people don't have any idea what I just said. But if I said it with great concern as I leaned into the TV and told people what I was really worried about, now we can go share with our friends at how bad it is going to be. That's just data, no context. Now we have information, the next level, right? So now we have some context. We understand, you know, that 93 million miles to the sun has some relation to that. That's a really long ways because we don't know how to travel at light and speed and all those things, at least not yet. So now it has this really long ways away. We also have come to understand through science that that's an appropriate way, a distance from the sun for the earth to be to actually, so we can survive, right? So we have some context some information. It doesn't make us scientists, but we have some information that we can put that data into context, right? That's not even close to knowledge. Knowledge is when we're studying about something. We really are a scientist and we can understand things. And so we can start putting the pieces together, right? Maybe you, you, you think you understand investments really well, and now you can talk about stocks, exchange-traded funds, and what's going on out there, and PE ratios, and relating that around the world. That would be knowledge. That would really, really would be. And maybe you really do know a lot about the investment world. And that's an important point. But still, all the way on another planet is wisdom. And what we have to be careful of is thinking we're being wise and informed when all we have is data or a little bit of information. So let's not be thinking that information is wisdom. Information is data, normally, at the very best, some knowledge, but it is not wisdom. So be very careful with that and what you're thinking you know, okay? All right, and we have to constantly question. If we are not questioning ourselves all the time, then I, I think we get locked in. Don't you? I mean, really, it's easy to get locked into a thought process. Like, for example, the great investors in the past, like John Templeton and Warren Buffett, Michael Price, they were all great value investors. But the world changed. And I'm not saying they are not doing a great job, but you have to change with it. I believe if John Templeton were here today, his idea of value would change greatly. But think about it. Think about what some of the great stocks have done. Has Amazon ever been a, quotes, classic value play? As in, it has a low price to earnings ratio? They promised decades ago that they would have hardly any profits. It would all go back in. So thinking of them in that way, it makes us really think small. We need to be able to change. And it doesn't mean that you change the basic core of let's look for good value, but look for good value wherever it is. And we always have to question that. What am I doing wrong? What am I missing? And when the market is doing something you don't expect, rethink it. Don't sit around and make excuses for why. Boy, did we ever see this. So much when, for example, Obama got elected. This is not a political statement. It's just a statement of fact. Many people were very, very concerned about what was gonna happen when they raised taxes, regulations, all these other things. Rightfully so. It's a very strong economic concern. But at the same time, what they often did was then impose why the market was working. It was only because the Fed was helping it out. Those corporate profits apparently were just, well, they were made up. They weren't made up. And if you were out of the market, instead of admitting that you needed to get back in the market, many people made excuses as to why. And it would change any time. 
And those we can't come back from. So you really do have to ask yourself all the time, what am I missing? What's changed? And am I willing to change and grow with it? Part two is next.